James Helder, Eiffel TV, MTK Global with me. I've got none other than trainer Peter Fury. Firstly, great to see you, Peter. How are you keeping? I'm good, James. Nice to see you as well. Good. I've got to say thank you very much for you and the team for making yourselves available today. I do appreciate it. Always were, uh, always willing for IT, IFL. IFL TV, yeah, yeah, appreciate that. If you want to tell us a little bit about what's going on with Huey Fury, we've seen he's scheduled to face at British champion Sam Sexton on the 12th of May. 12th of May, yes, uh, Macron Stadium. Okay. So it's going to be uh, exciting. Nice for it to be uh, in Macron Stadium. We know all the staff there. We've known them for quite a few years. Always been very good with us. Uh, they've had a massive response. So it's... Uh, it's, it's exciting. Yuri Fury said to me that sometimes you need to take two steps backwards to get one step forward. Having already fought at world level, do you feel it was a necessity to come back to rebuild and maybe get his hands on that, that lovely Lonsdale belt? I think the British title is always nice to have. Uh, it's not something that we're just pinning everything on. It's just what it is. It's a good fight for TV. Um, Yuri's on a well, he's on a comeback trail. It's like anything else, you know. If you don't win a world title, you've got to build your way back up. It's not a case of, is he ready, and building him back up that way. Mm -hmm. It's a case of getting him back where we need to be in the rankings. And the, the first, you know, for a first fight back against Sam Sexton, is a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good fight. Mm -hmm. What kind of a fight will you be expecting with Sam Sexton? Will it be an all-out war? Will it be a fan-friendly fight? Are you expecting Yuri Fury to control the centre of the ring and, and outbox him? What... What can we expect? You know, to be honest, I've not even started count yet. We're starting it uh, at the end of the month, any time now, which will be uh, around the 1st of March. So uh, I've not even had a look at Sexton yet. Mm. So uh, we'll have a look and just see how it goes, James. You know how it is. Mick Hennessy getting the full band back together. He's got his TV, TV dates and everything scheduled in. So it must be, from your point of view, great to see Mick Hennessy getting everything where it needs to be. Yeah, it's nice for Mick, you know, he's been through a hell of a lot over the past few years, um, which I won't go into on here, but uh, it is, it's, it's very nice for Mick, and uh, he always does what he says on the tin, so it's, uh, it's good, it's a British title fight, and um, we're looking to do big things with Yui this year, for sure, he's on the move, and he's on the move fast, he'll fight again in July, we're looking to put him out in July, Probably September, even try and squeeze a fourth one at the end of the year, but definitely three fights this year for Yui. Because the May thing, it was a bit late for us, um, but it's what it is. But he'll pick it up anyway, so um, other things come in the way why it couldn't be any sooner. Well, it's conflicting with other fight dates and stuff like that, with other shows and stuff, so it's, um, it's all good. Now, Yui Fury at only 23 years of age, many people would say, like, why in such a rush with him when he could have maybe waited for an easier chance to get a world title fight. Are you in the belief of when a world title shot is available that you must you must grasp it with both hands? I'm not in the belief of that at all. I'm not in, you know, if you're not ready, you're not ready. Um, it doesn't matter to me. Boxing's a hobby for me. So the fact of the matter is, it's uh, if you're not ready, you're not ready. Look, Yui to me is an uncrowned world champion. You know, I'm of the sole belief, and so is 90% of the public, he won that fight. So it's just what it is. Um, there is things he needs to uh, improve on, and we've been working on them. And uh, you'll see it uh, when he fights. Let's talk a little bit about some of the fights in the heavyweight division. You, you mentioned Joseph Parker. You see that great fight with Fury Fury last time out. He, he's now in the unification clash with Anthony Joshua. How, how do you see that playing out? I see when you're on a world level that nobody's going to fall over with one punch. You know, Parker is a lot better than people give him credit for. You know, they're really go, going to see how awkward and how good Yui is when Parker fights Joshua because, you know, Yui's one of them. He's, a, he's an elite style himself. So, he's, um, Yui's got all the tools. He's going to be a phenomenal heavyweight. You know, that's not me trying to hype him or sell him, you know, wait and see. You know, I don't talk rubbish. You know, so uh, just watch what happens with him. So, it's a, it's, it's a case of... It's a case of the timing with you, when it is, when he gets his chance. So he will be a world champion, whether it be now, later this year, next year. Whenever he gets his chance, he'll take a world title. So that's where we are with you. Do you believe that Joseph Parker has enough about him, enough tools to cause Anthony Joshua problems? He sure has, you know, he's, he, he's tough. Um, 
they may feel like they can walk through Joseph Parker, but Joseph Parker's got you got to respect he's he's got some punch power himself. So it's it's going to be interesting. I don't see it being a walk in the park this fight. You know, look, if Parker makes a mistake, he's silly enough to sit on the ropes and let Joshua offload, he'd probably get stopped. If uh, if he goes rushing into Joshua, gets carried away, makes mistakes, probably gets stopped. You know, when you're looking at a unit like Joshua, he's got to be treated with a height of respect and he's got to be boxed properly because he's got the power to take you out because that's what his forte is, is planting his feet and taking you out. He's an, ex he's an exciting big heavyweight, but he's vulnerable at the same time. So these things uh, can happen, but this is not an easy fight for both fighters. Look, you've got two world champions. You know, you don't get a world champion for being a, working in a sweet shop, do you? Do you think Andy Joshua has hit his peak, his pivotal of, of his career, the, the best he's going to be, or do you think there's still more yet to come from Anthony Joshua? Well, he's got a very good trainer, hasn't he? So, you know, so Robert McCracken, you know, he'll be working and tweaking things all the time. When you're at this uh, world stage, it's all about the tweaks make a lot of difference. You know, you have to be very intellectually, have a good foresight. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, some fighters may think they've got enough, but there's, there's always stuff to improve on. You've got to keep moving forward. What might be great today is not great in a year's time. You know, everything moves forward. And you've got to move forward with the times. You've got to adapt. We'd well, like to talk to a little bit about Luke, <coughs> Lucas Brown coming here to take on Dillian White. Now, there's been a lot of, a lot of uh, speculation on that fight. How do you see that contest playing out? I see it, um, Lucas Brown now. I think Dillian's got too much in his arsenal, you know, to grit it out and uh, take him into the trenches, Lucas Brown. And we've not seen really Lucas Brown in any trenches, you know, so I see Dillian White coming out with it. But he's not got to disrespect Lucas Brown's power because mm -hmm. he's, he, he can hit. And, you know, he, he can change the fight around in one punch, as we've seen. You know, he's a big unit, he can punch. But Dillian's got to use his boxing. I just think he's got too much. He's got too many tools in his box for uh, Lucas Brown. Mm -hmm. I see him coming through that. If Dillian White does <coughs> go through that and Huey Fury wins his fight, potentially somewhere down the line in 2018, could that be a fight that the fans would like? Could it? Could it happen? I'm going to say something now to you, which a lot of promo a lot of people wouldn't say. Bring any fight on for Huey. Yes, for sure. If Dillian White wants a piece of Yui, next fight in July, put it on. Simple. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't, we move on. It's a business. We're not, mm -hmm. not hunting Dillian White, are we? It's a fight that it's there. If it's interesting for them, then do it. It'd be interesting for us because Yui's on the climb back. So Yui ain't messing around. So any, any fight we can get, which is beneficial to us, we'll take it. So it's whether it's beneficial to them. It ain't about them saying, oh, he's called me out. It's this or that. Look, we've got a path to get. And if we see anything that's beneficial in us getting to that path, <coughs> we'll take it. Boxing. I'd like to talk a little bit about George Groves retaining his WBA Super Crown in the World Boxing Super Series semi-final in Manchester. Chris Eubank Jr. coming up short. Firstly, did you enjoy the fight and what, what were your thoughts on the contest? Well, I did enjoy the fight. Um, you know, it's entertaining. And, you know, what Eubank brings to the table, he does bring a lot of interest. You know, you know, Love him or hate him, whatever. On that side of it, the PR side is good. So he does well there. Although we'll say this, he's not, he hasn't really damaged himself in this fight. And I'll tell you the reason why. Because people will be keen to see what he's like in his next fight. They'll want to see if he's took on board his mistakes and rectified it. Mm -hmm. But if he has another, if he does the same thing what he's been doing in his fights, and people see that, then he'll, his credibility will just go through the floor. Because they'll just say, well, he's tried against Billy Joe Saunders. And to be fair, he's not improved from Billy Joe Saunders' fight, because he hasn't learned from that. That should have been enough, the market to say, for the, for the light to come on. And say, well, look, I got completely outboxed early on. You don't come out in the first round and stand there flat-footed in the centre of the ring. So I think when he comes out again, I think uh, he'll still demand a lot of interest. Is he a world-class fighter? Yes, he is. Has he got the capability to do good things? Yes, he has. You know, he just didn't do them in that fight. And I think the reason why, what you've got to look at, 
is Eubanks. He just thinks, you know, I'm very powerful, I'm game. If I get you up close, I'll do you damage. You need more than that. Because look, that's, that's look at Groves first. Let's dissect this and look at George Groves, yeah? George Groves is a puncher. He can hit. So George Groves, I sat on the back foot, he's kept moving. So when Eubanks flat footed with his feet flat on the floor, he's got to pick from his heels, get on his toes to try and do something and charge forward. Groves has already spotted you coming from a mile away. He's off. So that's not working, yeah? Them attacks, you know, I said in interviews previous about this fight, George Groves needs to not get involved, tie him up. He tied him up. So the tactics was right. Mm -hmm. And he adhered to them tactics from 1 to 12. Mm -hmm. And Eubank kept to the same standard stuff from 1 to 12. You know, when you're losing, look, when you lose, you can't afford to lose first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. What are you doing? So straight away, the game plans, what they've had, is irrelevant. I think it's, a, I think it's just a case with uh, young Eubank. I don't think he listens to anybody. I think he needs to take on board. You know, you get a lot of fighters say today, they don't need trainers, they don't need teams behind them. Oh, you do. You do. That's a fact. That's a fact of life. I've got businesses up and down and I need people. I'm not a one-man band. I need help. Without you holding that camera, without everybody else, a little piece of this, I'm useless. What am I good by myself? What am I going to do? Stand in the toilet and talk to myself in the mirror. <laughs> so basically, you do, need, you do need good advice, solid advice. And for me, for young Eubanks, he needs to work on his footwork. He's too flat-footed. He uh, has no feint behind his shots. There's no looseness. He's holding his jab in the wrong position. So he's not fluent, he's got no fluidity there. Not because he's stiff, it's just the way he's going about it. So the simple tweaks, but they're all wrong. Yeah? But let's not take anything away from George Groves. You know, he boxed a perfect fight, lovely jab, side on, you know, because he got the distance right, just done everything perfect. So it's all right being criticising of Eubanks, what Groves done, he boxed that much of an elite level match, he just brought out all the flaws in Eubank. Because Eubank, probably all the fighters wouldn't be able to do that with Eubank. But he did. So Groves needs maximum credit for what he done there. Because he fought the perfect fight and he's proved George Groves is a worthy world champion. And he's got a good team, excellent trainer again. So, you know, he's on the right path. I've always liked George Groves anyway. He's always had something about him. So he, he's proved it. And look what George Groves has done. Look, he got stopped by Carl Froch. He's had two or three world title shots. Everybody thought this is the end, this is the end. But look at the turnaround. Look at the turnaround because he's got with a trainer he can gel with. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Somebody that's knowledgeable, techs on board. Because George Groves is a clever young fella. So this is what happens when you listen and you take good advice on board. So look where he is. He's flying. But young Eubank, look, you can blame this, blame the dad, you can do all this crap. He'll only benefit from that if he's wise enough to take a sit back and have a look at it. But look, me looking on the outside, who's he lost to? George Groves, a very good world champion. Billy Joe Saunders, he's an exceptional young, young fighter, Billy Joe Saunders. He's a worthy world champion. Not saying it because he's a traveller or anything else, I'll, I'm straight with it, you know. He's a southpaw, he's the most awkward boxer under the sun. Yeah. I see him giving Triple G Canelo run for the money. Now he's, now, he's got his, now he's on his job and he's looking after himself, yeah? He'll do good things. So young Eubanks only fell short at the elite level because he's not listening and he hasn't got them elite tweaks to step up to that level. But the tweaks he can remedy. So with the right advice and the right guidance, he'll do it. Do you think with with what's happened in his last performance that Chris Eubank Jr. will be better off maybe trying to separate in terms of from his dad's advice immediately regarding training and maybe even listening to the likes of Ronnie Davis in the corner who is a very experienced man. I've got a lot of respect for Ronnie, you know, he had Eubank Senior, look what he done with him, you know, and uh, they don't scale great heights, you know, look, respect your elders, you know, and give people the ultimate respect they need, you know, you don't have 
you don't have a trainer like Ronnie Davies holding holding the holding the spit bucket. You know, that's 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 look at it. Mm-hmm. You know, look, if you're a young lad coming through, you're a bag carrier or whatever, then you shouldn't be in the corner. You need to be holding the spit bucket. This is an intelligent game, this it's not it's not for idiots to try and get the face on camera and be famous, you know, on somebody else's credibility, is it? So if you don't belong, you don't belong. And you can, I can see when somebody opens his mouth if he belongs in that corner or not, the way he speaks. Mm. So the thing is what you've got to look at, Ronnie Davies is clever. He knows as much about boxing as anybody. But like I said, if them tactics and them flaws are not being discussed with young Eubank, and again, people blowing smoke up their ass, this is the problem. If, they're, if they just think, oh, I'm not going to say anything because you're going to go mad, this, that and the other. Well, if it, what he needs to do, he needs to understand... That's the way it is. Do that, or there's the door. Get through it. See you later, mate. It's one or the other. Mm. If you're not listening and you're not adhering to what the trainer says, what are you there for? Do you understand? It makes his split with Adam Booth more intriguing as well. We don't know the ins and outs of that, but we know he was trained for a little while by Adam Booth before they mutually went their own ways. So speculate as, as to what you can, as to what may be the case there. Can't speculate, can you? You know what what's happened between Adam Booth and that is is what it is. Adam Booth's a very good trainer, so uh, whatever's happened, if he was under Adam Booth, that performance wouldn't have been happening for sure. Mm-hmm. But it's all right saying it probably would have been because you know if Young Eubanks has got it in his head where I can do this, I can walk through anybody, that attitude, then if you're not listening to anybody, he might have the best team under the sun. We're only speculating with the father and whatever. It's all speculation. We don't know really what's going on. What we do know is he's got a lot of flaws there which are obvious, obvious to see. You know, his feet, he needs to be more loose, he needs to be more fluent behind the jab. His jab's in the wrong place because he's looking to do damage. Straight away when Eubanks is there, he's poised to take your head off. Mm-hmm. That's wrong, man. You ain't going to get nowhere with that. Joshua's only getting away with it because it's the heavyweights and the more slower. That style works for him. When he can take your head off with one shot. Mm-hmm. Ain't going to work for a middleweight or a super middle. Mm-hmm. Does he need to come down in weight? <coughs> I don't think so. Seems you super see middle. him back at 168 comfortably. 100%. You know, I heard, a young, I heard a comment from him where he's looked up and said, oh, you know, you know, maybe the shots was hurting. Well, look, when you've run out of ideas and you're walking into Groves, yeah, who's a banger, the punches are going to hurt. So this is what I mean where the fighter is not always best to judge things. Now, because he was there, before he shook a little bit, because he looked shook, he, he did get wobbled a few times in that fight. But when you're walking into straight rights of somebody like George Groves, who's planting, you're, he sat on the back foot and you're taking him. And you're going in, desperation, because your corner's lost the plot and everybody's saying to you, look, you're losing, you're losing, get and do something. This is what happens. You're all out at sea. The game plan's out the window. What you should be doing in the gym is saying... What if that goes wrong? What if that scenario happens? What if that happens? What are you going to do? Don't just look at the good things. <laughs> look at the bad things first and try and resolve them. Anyway, enough on them. I wish them all the best. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we didn't talk about that for too long. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the fights coming up. One fight that intrigues me, David Hay, or t- excuse me, Tony Bell UV David Hay in the rematch. Certainly going to have a little bit of fireworks and a little bit of spice to that one. What, what are your thoughts on that contest? I was impressed with the, the last fight, what uh, Bellew did. You know, it's the same again. You know, look what Bellew done. Totally relaxed. You know, David A was loading up. Same again with Eubanks and Groves. Very similar again. Mm-hmm. Same strategies again. He tried to get him out of there. I think David A believed in his own hype, you know, 23 knockouts, 24 knockouts, and he took that in the ring with him. You know, he's a clever fellow. I think he's remedies his mistakes. He knows exactly what he needs to do. You look at him now, he's slimmed down. You know, he's going to box his way around the ring, and it's going to be a lot different fight, I believe, for this time. If, and it's a big if, has David A got it in him to do this anymore? You know, he's, uh, he's well off. <coughs> The good life, you know, when you're continuously working in your career, some people has, you know, different phrases of mind. It all depends what phrase of mind David A is in. But if he wants it, then he can do damage because he's a nightmare for anybody, David A. He's got fast hands, he can punch, he's just got to use his boxing. 
Mm. But I see this as a genuine 50-50 fight again, because um, I don't Bellew's no mug either. You know he can fight. Do you think he's got better with age, Tony Bellew? Yeah, I do. Yeah, he's improved. He's improved. I think he suits the heavyweights. And why not? He he's, he belongs in there. You know, it's like saying he's too small. He's this and that. I wouldn't like to be it off him. No, definitely you know, not. he can shake any heavyweight. Listen, he's he, he's there. People who underestimate people's, you know, look, I don't listen to what anybody's got to say. Talk's cheap. He can give any heavyweight a run for their money. Doesn't matter. It's just about people's opinions. Mm -hmm. But he's there, you know, WBC cruiserweight champion. Come over to the heavyweights. He's doing well for himself. He hasn't put a foot wrong. What's to criticise? Mm -hmm. You had to place a bet on who you think would be victorious. Just from a tactical point of view, not maybe a personal favourite point of view, but who, who would you think would win that fight? Again, it's, it depends what rolls up on the night, isn't it? You know, I just uh, I can't really pick because it just depends what which fighter's coming in with what game plan. Mm -hmm. Either fighter's capable of taking it with the right tactics. Do you think it could be a make or break fight for the for the loser of that? Do you feel that doors could close after after that fight should it not go? the way each man hopes it just same again it depends how you lose if it's very close it's neck and neck they have a war of course both can come again mm -hmm. will David A want to come again I, I doubt it mm -hmm. I think if David A loses he will back it up mm -hmm. because he's got look he's into promotion now isn't he he's got other fighters he's yeah, at, the likes of Joe Joyce and Willie Hutchinson yeah, exactly he's got a life. different he's got a different mindset than what he did have and this is what I'm saying it's a different era for David A, he's in another phase, so to speak. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. he, he's not really into the fight phase, so I think he's having this fight because he wants to prove something to himself. But let's see. But I think the answer to your question is if he comes unstuck, I think he'll just. He's had a lovely career, hasn't he? He's done very well for himself. He's done brilliantly, becoming undisputed cruiserweight champion, WBA a heavyweight champion as well. Yeah, Great accolades to have. Got to respect it all, so he's done well. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about Deontay Wilder defending his WBC strap against Luis Ortiz. Um, good fight on paper, firstly. What, what are your thoughts on that one? Uh, see uh, Wilder coming through it. He's not going to go silly, Wilder, and try and steam all over Ortiz. They're not silly anyway. They've got good trainers. He's got a good team around him. I see, uh, I see Wilder coming out with it. Hmm. Probably late stoppage or something like that. Do you think this will be the acid test that people have been requested or requesting of Wilder that, that we see him in these big, big fights where people are going to actually put it on him? I don't think uh, Ortiz is going to be able to put it on him. Seriously, you think it'll be a one way sort of traffic? I've seen these Cuban every week before. You know, it's all right, they can, they can mow down a lemon, a journeyman. When it comes down to the real deal in a world title fight, they seem to go slow. Look for excuses, all goes wrong. And Lewis ain't far younger than me. Uh, what his name? Ortiz. So <laughs> I just if, if Wilder can't beat him, Wilder's going to be badly exposed. That's all I've got to say to him. So I'll see Wilder doing it. <laughs> One thing I meant to mention <laughs> that while we was on the subject of Groves Eubank, sorry to go back onto that, is did you happen to see Prince Nazim's comments after the fight? And if so, what what did you make of that that whole thing? <laughs> Pay-per-view. I've paid my 16, 20 quid to listen to him because I laughed my head off. I had tears rolling down my eyes with him. He was funny. But I just because I was watching the telly and I was listening to him speak, yeah. Colin, Mc, what's his name? Colin McMillan? What's his no, name? it'll be a Duke McKenzie. Duke McKenzie, Duke sorry. Duke McKenzie, yeah. And, uh, and he was like, I don't think he could believe it. <laughs> he, was trying, he was looking on and he was trying to talk to him, Naz, Nazia, and he was having none of it. So funny as you like. Yeah, that was comical, but... No, I don't agree with the comments. In particular, what comments did you not agree with from Prince Nazim? Well, saying he's finished. I understand about the what Naz said is right, where you, you're coming in, you own the house, you, want, you own the building, you're talking about next generation and all this, and this happens. So, you know, I can understand the criticism being levelled at it, but he's got, uh, he's got ability, young Eubank. It takes a good man to get in there. You've got no game plan. You're in with... Uh, Phenomenal fighters at world level. You're taking punches after punches and you keep coming in. Yeah. You know, you've got something. You know, look, we all get down times. You know, don't kick people when they're down. Fair comment. You've been down in your life, I've been down in mine. Don't kick anybody. 
give everybody a, a proper chance. Eubank, you know, it's time to eat humble pie, like I've had to eat it, like the world's had to eat it. That's why you mature, that's what grows wisdom. You need to humble yourself, he's got to do just that. His time's come on national television. So what? He's gone the 12 rounds, he's had a good fight, but to say, retire, you ain't got it, basically you're useless and all this, no, not at all. Both in agreement that ITV need to give Naz some sort of retainer. We need him on every sort of event that they cover, and maybe even some wider events. He, he's well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to get older Mick Hennessy and tell him to get older Naz to do Huey and Sexton. It's worth every penny. Because he's going to say after the fight, both Huey and Sexton need to do bin job. <laughs> I think Naz may have been so angry because he, he backed <laughs> Eubank to win. Yeah. I think that offended him personally. <laughs> I don't think well, you know, you can get it wrong. <laughs> Nobody's Einstein, are they? You trip over and break your leg in there. Anything can go wrong, can't it? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to employ him because of that. He is a national treasure, isn't he? Listen, he is. He he is. is. You've got, you got to love the way he goes on. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, definitely funny. Now, I've seen you guys have been working in particular with the MTK. You seem to have a fantastic relationship with the whole sort of MTK and the expanding team. How, yeah. how has everything been so far with that? Yeah, the personal friends of mine, you know, they are very close to me. Um, Louis done doing been doing some great work with uh, Johnny Roy at the MTK gym while he's been ticking over. Johnny Roy's been working with some excellent things. I went there the other Friday just to uh, see what was happening, took Huey on the pads. You know, phenomenal the way Huey's coming on with the, with the stuff that I've told him to work on. So me and Johnny spoke, I've spoke to Johnny what Huey needs to work on. And you know, absolutely over the moon. So big props to Johnny Roy, Preston, MTK. Um, so it's all good so um, I'm back now I'll take over the reins on the 1st of March and we're in full camp I've got a um, I've got a specialist guy coming over from uh, New Jersey to uh, work alongside with me with Yui he's uh, he's coming to work over with Yui for the fights he's working on various things outside of boxing which I see as uh, evolution type stuff so he's, uh, he's joining the team. We look forward to having him over. Uh, people will see him in the training camps and stuff. He's going to be doing a lot of work with Huey outside of boxing. Um, yeah, and, that, and that's it. We're looking at sparring partners now coming in. And it's all, it's all systems go, really. Now, I know you train Huey Fury and the very enigmatic Peter McDonough. Um, are you on the lookout for more boxers to work with uh, in the sort of coming months, coming years? I've got. I've, I'm on a mission, you know. We got um, Tyson got his world title, you know. This is Huey's uh, time. I'm working on with Huey at the moment, and uh, that's it. If anybody wants some advice for me, it's free. Can anybody really pay me for my time? You know, it's just one of them, isn't it? Yeah. If I like you, I'll do it. And if I can't, you can't sway me. Can't sway me with money because boxing's a hobby. Mm. I've got to like you, I've almost got to love you to be able to do it. Otherwise, I'm not really interested in it. Okay. Unless you want to come to me and say, Peter, there's three or four or five or six hundred grand to go and get me ready for a world title fight, because that's the kind of money I'm used to. So, if you want to pay me for it, then talk about it. If you want some advice like I'm giving you on this, it costs nothing. I will help you. I ain't a stuck-up prick that needs paying for everything. Come and see me, get the best of advice, sit down, have a bit of lunch with you, tell you what you want to hear. You know, whatever is going to help you. I'll help anybody. Well, nobody can pay me for my time. So am I going to have a gym full of fighters training them with a tracksuit on? No. <laughs> That's the answer to that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Mick Hennessy's return. We know he's got TV. We know he's scheduled for his first big show back on May the 12th. Um, yeah. Do you expect a lot more shows from Mick Hennessy this year? What was the plan? What can you tell us about? I think uh, yeah, they're going to do big things this year. With they've got our max, he's got our maximum support. We're going to have a young world champion anytime soon. So um, you know what a great story it is for Mick. You know he's going to have a second heavyweight world champion, and this is a world champion that's not going to do anything else. He'll be with Mick. So you know I'm a team player. So um, nobody's going to get left behind. You know they have not left us behind in, in hard times. You know, without Mick, you probably wouldn't be boxing. Do you regard Mick more of a family member rather than a a sort of promoter or business partner? 
You can be family, you can be whatever you want. If you're not doing a good enough job, you've got to move aside. So it ain't about that. You know, I do look, he's a close friend of mine for sure. And I do, you know, I've got some friends I regard as family. You know, they're not strangers to me. So, like I said, without people, without friends I've had for 25, 30 years, 15 years, 10 years, whatever it may be, I wouldn't be where I am today without them. Mm. So it is, it's about all of that. But Mick, you know, he's not put a foot wrong anywhere in ever since the time I've known him. He's come through. Don't forget, it's me that's been on the phone with him for four or five hours per day for God knows how many years. Mm -hmm. So I, I know what he's about, and that's it. You know, I'm very happy with him. He does his job, and, uh, you know, we've got a new team member in Ali as well. He's a, he's at the, he's a partner of NEC Sports. You won't see much of him on camera, because you don't need to do, because the more serious you are, you're not for the cameras, are you? You know, he's not right. interested in getting his face on the camera. Right, Mr. Hall. He's where he is. So we've got... Um, We've got some excellent uh, backup. We've got limitless resources because of Ali. Yeah, he's a serious guy in his own right. You know, so I think if you ask the Boxing Board of Control and UCAD, they'll verify just how powerful Ali is. So, you know, we've got a, we've got a good team. But that's all that, that's politics, that's, that's promotion side. Look, mix the promoter, yeah? I'm not a promoter. I'm not the jack of all trades, so. Mm. Mix with us, he's doing that. We've got uh, Ali, excellent addition to the, to the team, and it allows me to do one thing, concentrate on the fighter and get my job done. Mm -hmm. So that's a perfect team for me. We all get on like an house on fire. And that's, that's us going forward. Expecting an announcement regarding tickets, how people can purchase tickets for May the 12th at Bolton White's, is that correct? <sighs> get some information. Because yeah, I'm us? terrible with these type of things. Tickets aren't actually on sale at the moment, are they? Um, no. Let's have a look. Yeah, people need to view their interest. It's at Bolton White's. Yeah. Just one second. At capital H, normal T L. So at Bolton White's H T L. Okay. Okay, brilliant. So we've had a lot of interest, but if people do get the names down there, they'll get preferential treatment and get to get the, the best of tickets, obviously. Because they'll just do it as a, in the order they come in and the dates they inquire, they'll go down the list like that, I'm told. For more information, you can check out Hennessy Sports' website or obviously follow Huey Fury, Peter Fury on Twitter. Yeah. And you're getting quite into the social media stuff, aren't you? I see you've even got an Instagram account nowadays. Do you know what? I don't use Facebook. I don't use the Instagram. <coughs> I, I just look on the Twitter, I fly down it, and I'll answer... <coughs> I try and answer sensible comments the best way I can so yeah. I do yeah. it's I do good for boxing news though as well to see what sort of going on instantaneously rather than hearing it second hand or third hand I think it is but look you know uh, I want to do some positive things for boxing you know be truthful with everybody mm -hmm. get on and do what we do best get Yui to where he needs to be and enjoy the, enjoy the ride there'll be plenty of uh, videos going on in the camps and stuff. Mm. Anybody's got any questions in the interviews like yourself, James, yeah. you're always welcome. Yeah, no, I appreciate you know, that. You know, it's nice to speak. So it's good for the fans, it's good for everybody. It's just good to give them an insight to, as to exactly what's going on. As I say, you've always been fantastic with us, the whole of the Fury team. Anytime yeah. we've needed anything or you guys have made yourself more than available for us and I really do appreciate Peter Fury. Thank you very much. Good, welcome. I'll catch you again soon. Thank you, sir. Good man.